Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to take you through my makeup kit as well as my toiletry kit. I did recently get a couple of new containers from Amazon and they're amazing and I love them. And this is a video I've been meaning to make for quite a while anyways and so I wanted to share with you guys what some of my holy grail makeup items are, what am I currently using, what do I love, also what is like a must have for me to bring with me in my toiletry bag. I think it's really fun seeing what other people bring with them and what their sort of current favorites are. So hopefully you guys enjoy this video as much as I enjoyed making it and if this is your first time on my channel thank you so much for stopping by my name is Alithia and on this channel we do talk about perfumes we talk about home decor minimalism decluttering a little bit of fashion and pretty much whatever relaxing and fun stuff I feel like chatting with you guys about so if that is something that you would be interested in definitely head on down and hit the subscribe button also feel free to head on over and follow me on Instagram where I share a lot of behind the scenes footage and other little tidbits of my life sense of the day outfits of the day home decor things like that and without further ado let's get started in today's video all right guys so today's video is going to be a little bit different I haven't done this before so I'm really really excited to share this with you and this is the items I have in my toiletry bag as well as in my makeup bag so a few different reasons I'm doing this one reason is that it is highly requested I think it's really fun to see what other people have in their bags whether it's for traveling, going on a trip somewhere, what they keep in their makeup bag. I just think it's really interesting to see what different people use and what their preferences are. The other thing is because I absolutely love these two little makeup bags that I found at Amazon. They are so nice for traveling, you guys. I used to have the, and I still have, but I'm not using anymore, the Louis Vuitton Nice BB. I'll insert a photo of what that looks like. But the Nice BB actually is too big for me. I don't have that many toiletries. And there was a lot of wasted space in my suit case when I would travel or in my going away bag on the weekend there was just a lot of wasted room so I recently got these two items from Amazon and I'm really happy with them and I will share them with you they obviously don't match this one is a gray clear or translucent makeup bag and it's kind of like holographic in its color but I think it's really pretty it's not really expensive looking it's not fancy it literally was about ten dollars you guys these are very affordable I will link them down below or ones just like them if you're looking for something similar this one is black and initially it did come with a black one like two matching black ones and I'm still not sure if I want to stick with the gray one or if I want to do two matching like a black and a black I'm not sure about that I might go back to it I still have it sitting on my stairwell and I'm not sure if I'm gonna return it or not but I kind of thought that I wanted to keep it like the gray one for my makeup and the black one for my toiletries but what I love about these is that this one is TSA approved so it holds about a quart of liquids for carry-on so that's what I really like about it. I really like that you can see through, no matter which angle you're looking at, you can see through, you can see all of your stuff. There is no more hunting for things or searching for things. And I really like that when you unzip them and open them up, you can literally see everything. I don't like those little top zip pouches where you have to like fish around for stuff. So these are amazing. I really, really like them. And without further ado, why don't we get into it? Why don't we do the toiletry first and then we will go through the makeup items. Okay, so this is my toiletry bag, and as you can see, I love that when you open the flap, it opens up completely all the way, so you can easily see what is in your bag. This is kind of a mess because I did just get back from a overnight trip. It's a little bit of a mess. Usually it looks a little bit more organized than this, but when I put them in, I'll put them in nicely so you can see how everything is held. But I just absolutely love it, and even with all of this stuff in here, there is still room. So if I go like this and I push down, you, there is a lot of um, a lot of room in that bag, but at the same time, because it's kind of collapsible and moldable, it fits into any bag, and you don't have to worry about wasted space. So I truly love these little plastic organizers, even though they don't look nice, they are not fancy, they don't have any brand names, um, super super cheap. It is so practical. Okay, so I've taken everything out of here just to show you guys how you can fit everything in and how much actually fits in here. And that way I can kind of reorganize it and make it look really nice. But this is what it looks like without anything in it. And it's just the most aesthetically pleasing, cheap plastic container I've ever seen. Like I said, I kind of like the look of the black. So I think I might actually do the black and black instead of this and the gray one, but I'm not sure about that yet. But let's go ahead and get into what I keep in here. Okay, so let's start off 
with an obviously large item and this is a deodorant. This is the men's, um, the Dove Men Care Clean Comfort 48 Hour Protection Antiperspirant with Vitamin E. This is a little strange. I know some people think it's strange, but I know I'm not the only woman who does it, but I really like using a men's antiperspirant as opposed to a woman's antiperspirant or a woman's deodorant. I actually discovered this by accident because I was on a vacation and or on an overnight trip and I had forgotten my deodorant and I borrowed my boyfriend's and it was this one and I could not believe how well it worked and how clean and fresh I smelled for so long. Um, not that I'm particularly like sweaty or it's not that I'm particularly like stinky or something like that. I just find that this works so much better than women's deodorant. I feel so confident when I use it. I don't feel like, you know, six or eight hours into my day or 10 hours into my day, I feel like I need to shower or something. This literally lasts forever. If I do not wash my armpits for, I know this is like TMI, but if I don't wash my armpits for like a whole day and a night, it doesn't matter. I do not stink. This is incredible stuff. And I go to the gym and I do everything else. So yeah, this this is the best deodorant that I've ever found and I really, really like it. This is kind of a big one for a trip. I would definitely bring a smaller one if I was going like on an airplane. I try to pack a little bit more compact, but even so, everything fits in here really nicely. So that is the deodorant. The next thing is a toothpaste and I'm really not picky with my toothpaste. I get whatever is on sale and has some whitening. That's kind of my two stipulations. I like a whitening toothpaste and I like something to be on sale because toothpaste is getting expensive these days. So this is actually a large, obviously a large toothpaste. Obviously when I go on vacation or someplace down south or when I have to actually get on an airplane, I do travel a little bit more light, but this is just the extra one that I had sitting around. So this is a full size toothpaste and you can see it fits in here perfectly fine. The next item is my toothbrush and I just have it in one of these little white toothbrush holders and that fits in there just fine as well. So again, if I was traveling on an airplane going south, I'd probably get a smaller toothbrush, but I just kind of like using a regular size toothbrush. So my little travel size toothbrush is currently in my purse because I do like to brush my teeth throughout the day at work. The next item is a sunscreen and this is the Aveeno Sensitive Skin for Face SPF 50 Mineral Sunscreen. This is my holy grail sunscreen. I have been using it forever and it just works so well for me. And I also really like that it actually gives your skin a bit of a brightening effect. So when I'm choosing a sunscreen, I get the highest SPF I can, preferably 45 or higher. So 50 is perfect. I do prefer a mineral sunscreen because the chemical ones all burn my eyes. It does not matter what brand it is. It does not matter the formulation. All of the chemical sunscreens eventually work their way into the inner canthuses of my eyes and they burn. And I do wear sunscreen religiously every single day, sometimes twice a day, all over my entire face, including around my eye area. So I need to have something that's comfortable and isn't going to burn my eyeballs. And this doesn't burn. And this is a mineral sunscreen. So it does leave a little bit of a white kind of a brightening cast but it doesn't bother me at all because like I say it kind of just gives my skin this like brightening effect as if I put some sort of a primer on my face so I actually prefer it I like the way my skin looks with this than without it the next item is a contact solution and this is the Bosch and Loam I believe it's called um, just travel size contact solution so this is an absolute must for me because I do have contacts so if I leave town and remember nothing else, contact solution is a must because I definitely don't want to be sleeping with my contacts in. So the next thing is my contact case, which is an obvious need. The next item is a dental floss. This is an absolute must have. And I have to say you guys, ever since I got Invisalign, my oral care game has been so good because you have to look after your teeth so well when you have Invisalign. You have to brush and floss between every meal, which ideally you would be doing that anyway, but I have never been so diligent with flossing my teeth as I have been since I got Invisalign. So yeah, anyway, this is a must. And again, I'm not picky with my um, dental floss, but I love this one because it's tiny and just fits into like any little nook and cranny. So that is our dental floss. The next item is a lip balm. And this one I happened to buy when I was in the city a couple of months ago. So I actually keep one in my purse. I always have one in my purse no matter what. And that's kind of my holy grail Blistex. I think it's a good idea to have a spare lip balm on hand. You never know if you're going to be with somebody who needs a lip balm or if your lips suddenly get really dry and chapped. It's just good to have a spare lip balm. So I have to tell you guys, I have tried super expensive Sephora lip balms that cost like $25, $30 and 
not only were they not that moisturizing, they didn't even have SPF. So I would much rather spend four or five dollars on something like this and get something that's really, really nourishing, really moisturizing. And a lot of these actually do come with SPF. To me, that is a much better deal than spending 40 or 50 dollars on like a really expensive lip balm that doesn't even protect my lips from the sun. The next item is a moisturizer for my face. And this is one of those little plastic containers that you can get from any store in the little travel packages. And this is actually the Cetaphil hydrating night cream for face and I absolutely love it it's kind of my holy grail night cream I've been using it forever when I go on vacation I don't bother bringing all of my super expensive crazy skincare with me I don't bring my serums I don't bring my retinol I don't bring my vitamin C serums or anything like that because a I don't want them to break in my bag B they take up a lot of room and C I'm not gonna be gone long enough for it to make a really big difference if I miss it for a few days so when I go I just bring one holy grail um, moisturizer for my face and that's what this is the only downside about these little things these little containers is that I find that they are not durable I can't tell you how many times I've been on vacation and one of these has actually broke and it just like quit screwing on or the plastic cracked or something so they're really not the best. I would like to get a little like glass one that's a little bit more durable, but so just to show you where we're at now, we have it about half full, like this is half of my items and there's still a lot of room. And this thing I swear is like a bottomless pit. You can just keep adding and adding and adding and it just never seems to get full. The next item is a shower gel and this is actually the Irish Spring. I pretty much just fill this up with whatever is in my shower and bring it with me. And when I go on vacation to a fancy hotel or something or like a really nice place, usually they have really good shower gels and stuff there in the shower so in that case I usually do not bring a shower gel to me it's just a complete waste it takes up room in my bag why would I do that when I know there's gonna be shower gel there or sometimes when my boyfriend and I get to our location the first place we hit up is like a CVS pharmacy and grab a couple of travel size items and that way we don't take up unnecessary room in the carry-on but for my weekend getaways I do like to bring my own shower gel because I can't tell you how many times we have stayed at an Airbnb B&B and whatever gel they had there gave me like an allergic reaction like it was some cheap something that just didn't agree with my skin so I like to bring what I know is going to work and this is kind of universal my boyfriend and I just share this one and it's perfectly fine it doesn't smell particularly masculine it doesn't smell feminine it's just a really clean good soap that's great for your underarm area um, and gets you squeaky clean so yeah that is the body wash. The next item is a makeup remover and this is I believe the Burt's Bees Rose Hip Oil makeup remover. I'm not exactly sure. I kind of alternate between this and a micellar water, but lately I've just been using this. So I fill up this little spray bottle with some of this um, cleansing oil, and then I always do a double cleanse. So I go over my face with this first, and then I follow up with a normal face cleanser to remove any kind of residue or anything like that. But this does a really good job of breaking up my sunscreen and my makeup and whatever else is on my face. If I was to just use a gentle face cleanser, it wouldn't get rid of all of that buildup. It wouldn't get rid of the sunscreen. And I just don't feel like my skin is very clean if I don't do a double cleanse, so I really am a fan of doing a double cleanse. So the next item is a cleanser, and I really like that the little container package that I got came with these little labels, so I can actually label it cleanser. And this, I believe, is the Neutrogena Ultra Gentle um, Creamy something or other face cleanser. This one doesn't foam. This is my second step in my double double step or two step um, skin cleansing. So I first use the oil or a micellar water. Then I go over it with this, which is very, very gentle. It doesn't strip my skin. It doesn't make it dry. And it does a good job of getting rid of any of that residue or leftover makeup and stuff like that. So yeah, face cleanser is an absolute must. I never rely on makeup remover wipes from hotels or anything like that because my skin is a little bit sensitive and you just never know what's in those products. And a lot of time they're heavily scented or they just are not saturated enough or something like that so always 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 bring my own cleanser the next item is some artificial tears hydrating or lubricating eye drops I do tend to get very very dry eyes especially when traveling or especially when we go someplace like 
to Nevada or California where it's a little bit hotter, my eyes just get really, really dry. So I always like to keep some eye drops with me. The next item is a body lotion. And I do like to bring my own body lotion for the most part. However, I think next time we travel, if we go back to the Wynn in Vegas, I probably won't bring this because the lotion at the Wynn is so nice and I just love it. And then I end up using theirs, but this is actually my own concoction. This is a mixture of the Sol de Janeiro Boom Boom Cream and the Coco Cabana. And I have just put them in here with a little spatula and I shook it all together. And that is the lotion I've been using. And this smells like heaven, you guys. It smells so good and it is so moisturizing. And so this is what I like to use when I get out of the shower or if we've been swimming or something like that. And it's great. So that's my little lotion. Again, I love that I can label the little container so that I know what's in everything. The next is a leave-in item for my hair, and this is a mixture of heat protectant and I think a like 10-in-1 leave-in hair conditioning something or other, I'm not even sure. And I just kind of fill this up as I need as I go. It's something that I feel is necessary to bring with me because I don't want to skimp out on my hair protection. If I'm on vacation, I'm probably blow drying my hair, I'm probably swimming. So I definitely don't want to skimp out on my hair care. So I always bring a little bit of heat protectant slash leave-in treatment for my hair on vacation. So this one I think is a mixture of like two or three different ones, I'm not even sure. And it's not very much. It's like a tiny, tiny amount, but it's just enough that I make sure that I can give my hair some nourishment and some hydration even when I'm traveling. And I had written on here heat protectant is what I'm pretty sure I had written on there and it's rubbed off now, but it's okay because I know what it is. And I got this from some super cheap travel um, like travel package a long time ago, this little container. And it has just held up so well. I think it was from Walmart or the dollar store. And I just love it. So yeah, I just keep on topping it up as I go. And, and finally, the last thing in my toiletry bag is a mini hairspray. This is a must. Hairspray for me is probably one of my favorite beauty products ever. No matter what I'm doing, whether I have a full face of makeup or a partial face, or no matter whether I've been able to shampoo my hair or not, I can always achieve a look that I like as long as I have hairspray. <laughs> so I love hairspray and this is the John Frieda Frizzies. This is my favorite hairspray brand. If you guys have been watching my channel for any length of time, you probably know that. Except this one is the Intense Hold. And I don't know why it's really hard to find a full size hairspray in the Intense Hold, but you can always find the miniature ones. I don't know if it's different where you guys are, but anyway, this is my favorite. So I really, really love this. And yeah, it's perfect for travel, obviously. And yeah, I love it. So we can just shove that in there. There really is no rhyme or reason because once you close this, it's not gonna matter. There is so much room, so you don't have to be too particular with how you put things in here. So that is the toiletry bag with everything in it. And as you can see, like I said, there is no rhyme or reason. You don't have to be too careful with how you load this up because it is so pliable and it just doesn't matter. Once you zip it up, you've got all this room. If you happen to have a really oversized or overstuffed, um, not oversized, overstuffed suitcase, you've got tons of stuff, you were traveling, you brought back a souvenir or you brought back some clothing or something on your carry-on, it doesn't matter because this thing is so squishy that you can literally just stuff it into any bag and make it fit, which is awesome. So that is the toiletry bag all full and all packed. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you use anything similar to me. And yeah, I really, really, I really love this, you guys. It's so practical. And if, for example, I was away for the weekend and I bought some other cream or something, I definitely still have room in here. I don't keep things like bobby pins, a comb, um, hair ties or anything like that. I don't keep those in here. I do have a separate little tiny travel container that I do like to keep things like Advil and Band-Aids and bobby pins and things that you need in a pinch and you pretty much always need them, but I don't like to keep those in with my actual like body care items. And okay guys, so this is the little makeup makeup container. As you can see, it's a pretty good size. Obviously, if you were traveling and you had a carry-on, you wouldn't be able to leave any liquids in here. You'd have to put any of your liquids into your other like TSA approved container for the sizing. But most of my other stuff could stay in here and would fit in here. So all of my brushes, all of my makeup, I'm not a minimalist in the sense that I only use one or two items on my face or for makeup. I'm a minimalist, I think, in the sense that I have only one foundation, 
one concealer, like one of everything that I really like. There are the odd things that I do like to play around with or experiment. I love trying new mascaras. I love trying new eyeshadows and stuff like that. So that stuff will switch out from time to time, but I never like to keep a whole bunch of them on hand because I just, I just don't like clutter and I don't like having too many things to choose from. So I'll go through everything and I'll tell you my thoughts behind them, why I have them, if I have multiples, how come I have multiples, that kind of thing. And we will put everything in this little case. So let's start out with my brushes. So these are all of the brushes that I have for eyebrows slash eyes. So I just have a couple of really flat angled brushes. I have one sort of fluffy brush to do some blending and then I have two sort of flatter brushes, two sort of flatter brushes to apply my eyeshadows. And these are no particular brands. I think I have one from Sephora. I have a couple from Shoppers Drug Mart from the Quo line. I have, what else is it even in here? Do I have an Anastasia one? I don't even think I do. Like it's basically just Sephora and whatever. I am not picky about the type of brushes that I use because honestly, you guys, half the time your fingers work just as good. So I don't think that you need a million different brushes. Um, and this is actually probably excessive because I don't actually do my brows with a brush. So I probably could even get rid of this little angled brush, except this is really good to do a winged liner. If you want to do like a really soft powdery winged liner instead of like a harsh one, this is good for that. So I, I do like to keep a little angled brush because you just never know when you're going to need a little skinny angled brush. And this one is from, oh, this is Anastasia Beverly Hills. I didn't realize that. So yeah, that's a really good one. And this one is from, I think, I think this is just Quo. And we have the, oh, I don't even know what this is. I don't even know how to say that. Some sort of a, some sort of a eyeshadow brush. <laughs> you can tell I'm like an expert when it comes to makeup. Also, this is from, I think, Walmart, I think. It's Eco Tools. And then we have just a Quo um, brush. So yeah, those are all my makeup and eye brushes. Next we have a stippling brush and I do sometimes like to do my foundation with a stippling brush. Not all the time. I do prefer a beauty blender. Um, but this is my stippling brush and I do really like it. And I think this is from Quo, I want to say. Here we have three more brushes and again, they're kind of random brands. And these are the ones I use to do my contour, my bronzer and my highlight and also my blush. And I'm not very picky with it. I sometimes will use the same brush to do like contour one day, highlight the next. I'm really not picky with it, but I do really like having these three brushes to choose from. So we'll stick those in there as well. Here we have a powder brush and this is the one that I use to apply my finishing powder all over my face. It's not as fluffy as it could be. It is a little bit more stiff. Um, ideally it would be a little bit fluffier, but I really like this one because I just like the finish that it gives me. And I find that I can really blend out my makeup and look, make it look very, very natural. So I really like this brush and this is from Quo. So I think this brush was like $40 or $50 from Shoppers Drug Mart. Really, really good little brush. The next item is a flat item and this is the Naked 2 um, Basics palette from Urban Decay. I will show you what it looks like. So these are the colors of the Naked Basics 2. However, as you guys saw in my Sephora haul video, I did try the Tartlet palette and I found that although it was really nice, I think it's still a little too excessive for me. There's a lot of colors in there I'm probably not going to use. So I actually did just order a new palette from Dior and I'm super, super excited to get it. I will share that with you when I get it, you guys, but I rarely, rarely, rarely use all the colors that are in here. Some of them are just a little bit too dark for me or a little bit too warm for me. I really don't do a ton of eyeshadow a lot, but I do like to have something just in case I do want to add a little bit of eyeshadow. So I have had this forever, you guys, and I'm just never going to hit pan with it because I just don't use it very often. But yeah, that is my one and only eyeshadow right now. And like I said, when I get my Dior palette, I'll share it with you guys and I'll show you what the colors look like. I'm really excited for that. So there we have it. My one and only eyeshadow. The next item is a highlighter from NARS and this is the Fort de France highlighter. And I'll show you what this looks like. So it is just this absolutely beautiful champagne kind of um, like light golden highlighter and I just absolutely love this and I do actually have two highlighters but I'll explain why that is after so this one really gives me a really nice kind of a bronzy like shimmering sun-kissed 
highlight, whereas my other highlighter is just a plain, true, like, highlight. So this one I do like for the summertime if I want sort of a bronzed, sun-kissed look, but I don't want to use a whole bunch of bronzer. This is amazing, and for people who are quite fair skin tone like myself, um, I really recommend checking the Fort de France out. So that is my one highlighter. So this is the other highlighter that I have, and this is from Becca, Becca Cosmetics, I guess it's called, and this is in the color Pearl, or in the shade Pearl. So this one, this is more of like a true highlight, I guess. It's just a very plain, I'll show you what it looks like on my finger. Yeah, it's a very light, shimmery, um, it's more of just a highlighter. It doesn't give me any kind of a bronzing effect or anything like that. It's amazing though, and I do like to have the two because I feel like they perform different functions. So this one is good where you just want a little bit of highlight, whereas the NARS one I like when I want a little bit of a sun kissed kind of a glow at the same time. So they do do different things. And yeah, I do really like this. Again, it is going to take me forever to hit pan on this. The next item is a bronzer, and this is from Tarte Cosmetics, and this is the Park Ave Princess Amazonian Clay matte waterproof bronzer. I'll show you what it looks like. And that is what the bronzer looks like. So it's just a really beautiful sort of a neutral. It's looking a little bit darker on camera from what I can tell. Um, but in real life, it is just this absolutely perfect, like perfect shade for me. It gives me just enough color that I can use it as a little bit of a contour if I want to. I can use it as a bronzer. I can warm up my whole face with it if I need to. Just amazing. Really, really like it. No complaints at all with this. And I like that it's not shimmery. It is matte, so that's what I prefer. And I like that it has just a magnetized closure. So it doesn't open up in my bag or anything like that. Really cute packaging. So that is my bronzer. So next we do have a couple of brow products and like I said, I don't like having multiples of something in my bag. I like to sort of find my holy grail and stick with that. However, brows for me has been an interesting journey because I have struggled with my brows so much finding the type of product that I like to use, finding the color that I like to use, being able to apply it properly. I'm just not a brow connoisseur. Like I'm really not like an expert in doing brows. So it's been kind of a struggle for me. I found three products that I do like, and these are the ones that I kind of go back and forth between, and I'm still experimenting and deciding which is my favorite. So I do have a couple drugstore and one high end. So this is the NYX Professional Makeup Precision Brow Pencil in the color Ash Brown. This does have a spoolie on one end, which I really like. It does have a twist up end on it, and I really like the shape of this product. It goes on really nicely. It's very smooth and creamy, and you also can blend it really, really well. So I do really like the NYX Precision Brow Pencil. This is a pretty good dupe for a couple of higher end brow products, apparently. So I'll throw that in there. I also do have one from Rimmel London. This is the Brow This Way uh, Fill and Sculpt Eyebrow Pencil in the color Dark Brown. Let me see if I can find the, that's the spoolie. And this also does have the retractable end on it. So this is really nice. And yeah, what I really like about this one and the last product is they're not too warm for me. I find that a lot of like medium brown, dark brown tend to be too red for me and they just don't match my undertone and they don't match my hair. My natural hair color is like an like a cool ash brown. It's not red. It's not copper toned or chestnut or anything. It's a very like cool brown and I have a really hard time finding browns that match my actual eyebrow color. So this is really good. So I really recommend that, especially if you're like a beginner like me <laughs> and you're looking for something that's pretty user friendly. This is really easy to apply. It doesn't apply too much product. It's not like super heavy handed and you can blend it out really, really nicely. And of course, like I said, it does have, it does have the spoolie and I just love, love having a spoolie on the other end because it minimizes the amount of stuff I have to have in my bag. So I don't need like a separate spoolie brush. So that is my other brow product. And finally, the last one that I have is more expensive and this one I just recently got and this is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz in the color dark brown. You guys, I did not think I would want or need a $35 eyebrow pencil, but you guys, I actually do understand the hype with this. This is so nice, the way it applies, the shade ranges that they have. I guess Anastasia Beverly Hills is like the eyebrow person, like the eyebrow people. Like if you want good brows, you go to Anastasia, right? So on one end, we do have the retractable, 
again, the retractable tip on it, and it just applies just the right amount. You can get these beautiful little hair-like strokes that are very, very natural. And then on the other end, you do have a spoolie again. So I have to say, I do understand the hype with the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz. Didn't think I was going to, but I get it. And that's pretty good because I'm not an eyebrow person. So for me to say that, that really says something. So that is my third eyebrow product. And like I say, I'm still kind of trying them out, trying to decide which one I like best, which one I find is most user-friendly. I don't do a full face of makeup every single day. I don't do my brows every single day. So yeah, take that for what you will. So next I just have a couple of little tools. So we do have an eyelash curler. I also have a tweezers. I always like to have a tweezer with me. Um, obvious reasons, I feel like it's just a makeup necessity. So I always keep my tweezers in with my makeup. Next I have a blending sponge and this one is, I don't even know what this is. I don't know if I got this from Sephora or Shoppers Drug Mart, I'm not sure. It's just a very fluffy, like squishy, I just love it, it feels so good. It's like a stress ball. Um, so yeah, this is my beauty blender. I did have um, a pink one that had like a flat edge on it. I kind of miss that. I kind of wanna go back to having one with like a flat edge. I just found that for applying foundation, it was so good. Next, we do have an eyelash glue, and this is from Tarte. And I don't actually wear false eyelashes very often at all, but the odd time I will get the urge to put on a set of false eyelashes. And in that case, you do wanna have obviously some glue. So we have eyelash glue. Very, very rarely ever gets used though. Next, we have a really beautiful blush and this is from the brand Ilia. And this one is called In The Mood. So this is one of their multi-sticks, which you can use for either your lips or for your cheeks. And I shared this in my Sephora haul video. I just think this is so beautiful, you guys. So it's not really looking like much on camera, but it is this beautiful sort of like rosy champagne pain, um, sort of warmer pink blush color, and I just love it. It just gives my cheeks just the right amount of tint without being too much, and it's a beautiful shade for my undertone. I do have warm undertones, so if you have warm undertone like me, I definitely recommend checking this out. It just ends up being, just like it looks on the end there, just a beautiful shimmery, like pretty pink rosy gold color, and it's just stunning, so I really like that. And blushes is something I have recently started to get into. I was not a blush girl, um, so yeah. So I've I've really started. Um, I've really been getting interested in trying different types of blushes and different types of makeup in general. That's something that I've never done before in my life was experiment with different brands and different types of products, and I'm really enjoying it. So another blush that I really like and I find is quite universal and quite beautiful is the NARS Orgasm. Obviously, this is a very very popular blush, and this is um, just. The the mini size. So that is what the NARS orgasm looks like. How pretty is that, you guys? It's just like this shimmery, kind of neutral pink. Apparently this looks good on all skin tones, whether you're warm toned, cool toned, neutral, and it's beautiful. And I do like to have the option of having a cream blush and also having a powder. Next is my concealer, and this is the Selena Gomez Rare Beauty Concealer in the shade 110N, and I do really like this as like a brightening type of effect. This actually doesn't match my skin tone, but I will use this if I want to do a little bit of highlighting, like down the bridge of my nose, under my eye area. To be honest, I don't think I'll repurchase this when I'm done. I think I'll try another concealer. This is nice, but I would like to experiment with different shades and stuff like that, So, but it works. It does the job, so that is the Rare Beauty Concealer, shade 110N. Next is my foundation, and this is the Stay Naked Weightless Liquid Foundation in the shade 10WY, which is the warm yellow toned, and I really like this. This is new to me. If you guys saw my Sephora haul video, you would have seen me talk to you about my thoughts on this. I find, though, that I definitely have to moisturize a lot because this does have a little bit more of a matte finish. It dries really quickly. Um, so if you have really, really dry skin, definitely make sure you moisturize if you're going to use this. But I really like that it really does not feel like I'm putting anything on my face. It's a very lightweight, like they say, weightless, definitely does make you feel like your skin but better. So I really, really do like this. I'm quite impressed with it and it's a really good um, color match for me. So next up, I do have some mascaras. And like I say, I don't like to have multiples of really anything in my makeup if I can help it because it just causes decision fatigue. However, mascara is one of those things. Tell me if you guys can relate. Mascara is something that for some reason, I love trying new mascaras. I don't know why. I think because my eyes are one of my best assets and I like playing them up. And so I just like to experiment with different things. But currently I do have the Dior 
the Dior Show Iconic Overcurl Mascara. This is really, really nice. It's similar to the um, Better Than Sex Mascara in terms of the wand and the formula. The next one I have is a drugstore one, and this is the L'Oreal Telescopic in Carbon Black. What I love about this mascara, you guys, for being, especially for being a drugstore mascara, this is so good. Makes your lashes so long. It just grabs on and literally makes them look super long and skinny. The other really good thing about this mascara, it comes off so easily with your micellar water or whatever you use to wash your face. You do not have to rub and tug at all. It just washes off very, very easily, which I really, really appreciate because I don't like having to do to, like I don't like having to mess around with my eye area too much um, so I really love how easily you can wash this off and then my last mascara is the Too Faced Better Than Sex mascara and I think it just comes in one color it's in black it's just black and it is not waterproof um, I do not like waterproof mascara like I said I don't like having to rub and tug and just wash too much around my eyes. The eye area is very delicate. It's an area where you get lots of wrinkles and stuff like that. And I'm trying to prevent getting wrinkles around my eyes. <laughs> so yeah, I really like that this one is also fairly easy to wash off, although the telescopic is easier to wash off. But this is just such a good formula. I love the brush. One of my favorite mascaras for sure. And this is a repurchase. And the final item in my makeup is the Hourglass Finishing Powder. And this is the Diffused Light Finishing Powder in the color, or I guess it's the, sorry, it's the Ambient Lighting Powder in the shade Diffused Light, I believe. <laughs> I don't know if I'm getting that backwards. I'm not an expert, you guys. And this is a new purchase for me and one of my favorites. I actually had a couple people message me and tell me they bought this because of me, and they said they love it so much, so that makes me really happy. But this is just an absolutely incredible finishing powder, you guys. I don't know how to describe it, but this makes my skin look so perfect and so airbrushed and so flawless. Kind of just erases anything you make a mistake on. If you dust this over, you can literally dust it over your brows, you can dust it over your cheeks. It just kind of blends and makes everything look perfectly airbrushed. It's like you took a photo and then you did like an airbrush effect to it. That's what this does for me. I love it. And this is in the shade it's the Ambient Diffused Light. That's the one, and I just love it, you guys. Let me see if I can get a little bit on my finger here. So that's what it looks like on my finger. And I don't know, it just, it's just good. I mean, I can't, I can't do it justice on camera right now, but it's amazing, I love it. A little bit expensive, but well worth every penny. And I do think this is going to last me forever because I don't do a full face of makeup every day. Yeah, so that is the last item in my makeup kit. So you guys, that is everything in the makeup kit. And as you can see, there is still so much room. So even if you had two foundations or more blushes, more eyeshadow or whatever, you have so much room in here. And even once you close it, like I said, it's very squishy and malleable. So it fits into any bag and there's just so much room. And I love that you can see where everything is at a glance. You open it up, there's no hunting around, there's no fishing around for anything. No matter which angle you're looking, you can see what's in here. I love that. So I never, like honestly, buying the Louis Vuitton Nice BB. It's a beautiful bag, but so impractical compared to something like this. I just love this. So yeah, that is everything, literally all the makeup that I have. Like I said, I will be getting a different eyeshadow to try out from Dior. So excited to get this one from Dior. And that's really about it. And then I just like experimenting with like different blushes and different mascaras. And like I said, I'll probably get a different concealer once this one's done. But I feel like I have the basics. I have everything in here that I need to do quite a nice face of makeup. Um, So you guys, that is really it. Those are my two sort of travel bags. I cannot tell you how much I love them. I love that they have handles. They're so user-friendly. They take up so little room in my bag. Lots of room in there if I wanna add more stuff. Really, really happy with it. 
Um, yeah, and unfortunately, like I'm kind of sad because I don't live near a Sephora. It's probably a good thing I don't live near a Sephora because I would probably be in there every day trying new makeup products and probably getting suckered into buying new makeup products. But I'm pretty happy with everything that I have, but I definitely still want to try um, experimenting with different blushes, different eyeshadows and stuff like that. But like I said, I do feel like I have a pretty, um, pretty good little like collection. I have enough in here to do a nice face for a formal event or just day-to-day -day wear. And yeah, that's really about it. So, and that's really about it for today's video, you guys. So that's it for today's video, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed coming along with me and spending a little bit of time with me and seeing what I have in my makeup bag and my toiletry bag. And I will see you guys all very soon in my next video. Bye for now.